since then you've come out and finally announced that you are not cloned and that it was it was kind of like just a a, a market marketing tactic right a way to raise awareness um, for the Raelian movements is, is all it was. For cloning itself, I think I really believe that cloning needs to be legalized and will be legalized um, if we want to stand any chance at beating all of these diseases and and even just dying from natural causes in old age. You know, I believe that uh, you know the recreation of DNA could be essential for us and uh, it could be detrimental for our whole planet even even animals that can are becoming extinct could no longer become extinct and we can clone them you know they could um we could do it for food and you know, we could do it for quite a bit of things um to help our planet so I'm, I'm really pro pro cloning i'm really all about it and that's what i was trying to just raise some awareness about you know it's not like i could say like i was you know an African woman that got mutilated or that I'm a girl that believes in tapas. You know, there was nothing, a lot of the stuff is pro feminism that it was hard for me to really throw it in there and make it something like that. But the only other thing than the pro feminism is the cloning. And I was like, you know what, this is probably a topic that definitely needs to be talked about in this generation. It's kind of buried in the internet, kind of shadow banned, so to speak. And I don't know why it is. There's like every day there's some new type of diet or new religion that I'm hearing surface. Fucking people not rubbing crystals together and shit. And I'm like, why aren't people speaking about science? And when they are talking about science, they are there's only talking about these fucking Scientology guys. And honestly, I'm not for what they're on. I've read I've read a little bit. I visited their facility. They're on something else. They're on the type. I, I you know what? I just don't want to speak on what they're on. They're just not. They're the opposite. Uh, what was the process like for you coming up with the idea to do this on Vlad TV? Were you like practicing this like at home? Uh, no, no, I was, uh, I didn't know what the hell I was going to say. I was um, sober. Um, this was actually quite early on before those meetings where I would begin to partake on stuff. So I was still, I was sober there. Um, I, I, was on neurotropics and vitamins, which is just nothing that's just suffer health, mental health, and, you know, like physical health. So I was on no drugs. I didn't even smoke any weed. All I had was some coffee. Um, I was, I was a, a, a little nervous because I didn't know what I was going to say or do. And I kind of just like, you know, let me just tune out and go autopilot here on this guy. And I feel like that'll be the best thing um, to do because from my experience of just being humorous, um, and improving, the best thing to do is just tune out and improv. Improv is improv, you know. So I, I it was all, it was all improv. Uh, he, the second he asked me that, I just kind of just going, and I think that's why it looks so focused and serious because I'm in here trying to catch my train of thought and speak as quickly as I'm thinking. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it was like when I when I watched the interview, I re I rewatched the interview uh, like I think two years after it even was released. I never actually watched the interview until that point. I was like, what the fuck? Like, this is crazy, this interview. Like, even the other videos that they don't talk about are actually way, way, way more viral, in my opinion. I spoke about some real shit in the other clips. Oh, that yeah, don't we're going to go about. into that because I wanted to touch on that too. But um, you could see Vlad's face, right? What was his face no, looking like? No, no you can't no see face. his face. You just hear I his voice. That's you. it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I just imagine him like smirking. Like behind mm -hmm. the camera, he's he knows he's got something at that point. I could, I could, I could hear a smirk if in someone's voice. Um, I, no, he was just like, I could see he was, he was like, okay, it was probably one of those like his eyes looked down to the side and he probably nodded and was just trying to process what the fuck he just said and was like, okay, yeah, that's different, <laughs> you know, because I'm sure people thought that Vlad was in on it with you, right um no nah, i never i never saw that i never saw that um what i did think that was quite suspicious is that when i did want to circle back with vlad and say hey can i give a real interview it, he denied it every time and i would try every three months you know i'd have my people hit his people or you know and it was just i even had one time where we my uncle was with him in person in vegas and i was like yo ask him bro he just posted a pic with dude like sit down he's your boy ask him see what's up and he literally just disregarded him. He said, y'all never seen a nigga just like just give me a blank stare and just change the subject. That's so weird. Wow. Did you get paid for the interview? Because I know no. he pays people. No, no. Uh, uh, I, I got the interview um, through a manager at the time, Miguel Solano. 
Uh, shout out Miguel. Um, he's doing really good things. He founded um, quite a bit of talents out of Florida too, like uh, your your like little pumps and stuff like that. For example, like uh, uh, Boom Gang and quite quite a bit of people. He's a uh, he's a pretty pretty good guy. So he he was the one that helped me with that. He helped me with a few other things too, like getting my account verified and shit.